Hey guys, I am Davey Wavy, and welcome to the business of sex. This is day four, I'm super excited. Before we get started, I wanna give a big shout out to our sponsors, adamandeve.com and Pure for Men. So please give them lots of love. I am really, really, really excited about today's episode. Our uh, first segment is on Gay for Pay, and I know you guys are really excited too. Welcome to the show. I have Tim Adonis and Chip Tanner. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Davey. So, uh, so this segment is Gay for Pay. It is. <laughs> no one told me that. <laughs> so, so what makes you guys a good fit for Gay for Pay? Uh, because I have gay sex for money. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just going to go downhill from here. Huh? I have a little experience, too. I've been in the business for about 12 years. I, I danced and did some gay stuff for money. And now I own a club where I have lots of dancers who allegedly do some gay stuff for money. Okay, <laughs> and I think for a lot of people, I mean, it's, it's really fascinating because like when you were growing up, like people want to be like a fireman or like a doctor or whatever, like. I just want to be gay for pay. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it was. And this is the fulfillment of it like, is, long, yeah. Imagine like, telling your mommy and daddy that, like I just want to grow up proud, and yeah. have sex with the same gender that I'm not attracted to. <laughs> So how, like, it had to, you had to get started somehow, right? Like, there had to be this moment or, like, how did you, I just spit everywhere. How did you get started? Uh, That's a good start, actually. Yeah. I just felt, well, I fell into the whole business by accident, like, purely by accident. So you I just, just tell, fell onto someone's just dick. Fell right into their dick, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just slipped and it just landed there. Okay. But just the whole, this whole world, I mean, if you would have told me, you know, 15 years ago that would have live this life, I probably would have jumped off a bridge, to be honest with you. It just completely happened by accident. And you love what you do. Oh, I love what I do. In my life, I'm, I always say that, you know, I'm living the dream, but it would be a nightmare to anybody else. But right. For me, it's a dream. And Chip, how did you get started? I actually started as a, a straight stripper, like stripping for females. I had a couple gigs where, you know, there's guys, and I gave some dances to guys. And it was actually kind of kind of just by chance. I was uploading um, videos on, on YouTube of just my, my gymnastics exercise routines, and I'd be topless. And someone messaged me uh, saying he could get me into porn. I told him I'm straight, and then he gets back to me offering me gay porn. I'm like, why are you offering me gay porn if I said I'm straight? And I had no idea about the, the whole um, politics or financials behind it, but like, Guys can just make so much more money and get so much more work doing it with guys. And I was a curious boy, so I went for it. By the way, at the end of the segment, you guys are going to teach me how to do a lap dance. So <laughs> Allegedly. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Um, you understand, though, that like you understand that people don't understand how oh, yeah. you're able to do what you do. How do you explain it? <laughs> I mean, I stopped trying to explain so much so long ago. I really did. Like, it's just, it's impossible. I mean, people, people are going to judge. They're going to have their own opinions about things. But, I mean, it's almost impossible to convince somebody otherwise if they, if they have their mindset that you're gay, straight, bi, whatever it is. Like, what if you're dating a girl? Like, how do you explain it to her? You, you know, a, a, a lot, geez, a lot of people, I think, don't even care to try to understand it that deeply. They're just like, I don't know. The, a lot of people will just, like, just take my word for it and just leave it at that. And then some people, yeah, like like um, Tim said, are just set in their ways. They they think uh, we're, we're we're lying to ourselves that right. like we actually must we must have to be at least a little bit gay uh, to do what we're doing. And um, yeah, so I can't I can't convince everybody. So if I was a stripper and if I was a gay stripper, like the people that I am dancing for, I wouldn't necessarily be attracted to all of them. It's like. You're stripping. It's not about you being attracted to that person. And that, that's another issue. I mean, like, you, if, even if I'm, you know, straight and I give uh, lap dances to girls, that doesn't mean, like, 100% of the girls I'm giving dances to I'm, I'm attracted to. It's, it's possible to do things that you're not attracted to for money, <laughs> regardless if it's sexual or not. But that's the irony, at least, at least in that world of, you know, the strip clubs. For a, lot, for a lot of gay men, the fantasy is to have a straight, masculine guy dancing as opposed to someone that's, that's gay. Interestingly, you were telling me a little bit earlier about a jerk-off video <laughs> and how it escalated. <clears throat> it, yeah. And I know you want to hear the story, so so I, tell I've us kind about of that. yeah I've kind of dabbled in in many things, you know. So in addition to just the you know dancing, I, I began dancing for women. That's how this all started. Actually, I danced for women for two years, and then and I heard a rumor you can make more money in the gay scene. And I saw an ad on Craigslist, like right out of a movie, and started and. No, it's first, like Julia Roberts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The first night, nothing I, the, like that. The first night I went there, I made an enormous amount of money, and you know that was the last day I danced for women, and I just kind of segued into the into the gay scene. 
So the jerk off video. The jerk off video. So <laughs> yeah. So after after <laughs> dancing for a while and doing you know doing the whole gay scene in New York City and Atlanta and Miami, you start getting offers for all kinds of things. And you know, another segment of the business is video work. So in addition in addition to full on gay porn, you have solo videos that you know sure. there's that. You you could you could attract a different a different type of guy that you know doesn't want to go and have intercourse on camera, but they'll do a solo jerk off video or some type of fetish work. Chip doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I so, do all kinds of videos. So long story short, I, I shot with Playgirl and I, I did a, a bunch of solo videos, and then one time I did uh, this fetish video. So they brought me up there and you know they tie you up and you're ball gagged and all this stuff and spanking all these things and you know it was fine. You know, it was just one person, and I think. At the time, I think it was like 800 bucks for the video, and I was I was living week to week. I needed money. Right. At the time, you know, the the producer asked. He said, "If you let me jerk you off, I'll give you like an extra 300 bucks." And I kind of had like this in my mind. I was like, <laughs> "That's kind of gay. Is that too gay? Does that make me gay now if I'm doing that on camera? All the rest of it." But 300 bucks is still <laughs> 300 bucks. Yeah. And at the time, you know, at the time, like that that was allowed me to pay my rent or whatever else. So long story short, he jerked me off. I did my job and. I always say, like, it didn't matter to me too much. Like, I didn't care if, if I wasn't going to advertise it did something like that. But if there was one person that you could just give me an out that would never see it, I would just say, okay, this one ex-girlfriend, just not her. Right. <laughs> Lo and behold, like, two months after it comes out, I get a phone call. And uh, we'll call her Cruella, just to uh, <laughs> give her a name. So she picks up. I say, I say, hey, what's up? She said, do you know what I'm doing right now? I said, what's that? She's like, I'm watching you get jerked off with my mom. <laughs> by said, some dude. Yeah, by some dude. I was like, with your mom? I was like, oh, that's great. You know? She's like, yeah, you're fucking disgusting. It hangs up on me. But and a views of you. Hey. Yeah, views of you. Yeah, yeah. And it was just kind of, it was one of those yeah. you know, points in life. You're just like, yeah, this is what my life has come to. So so yeah. we actually we actually have that clip. So let's, oh, let's, shit. Let's, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. Oh, man. I'm kidding. So uh, let's talk about escorting because, like, gay for pay, uh, stripping. I think a lot of some people can get that, but the actual physical act of like having sex with another man, I think, throws a lot of people for a loop. I guess my question is like, how how can you get hard or <laughs> or ejaculate? Like, that seems to be. Kind of a tough <laughs> predicament. Kind of hard. <laughs> right, no pun intended. It's kind of a loaded question, though, because I guess it depends what you consider sex. That's a good point. <laughs> what do I consider sex? Yeah, like, like, what do you consider having sex with, you Like, know, fucking someone? <laughs> like, sticking your dick in someone's ass or mouth? <clears throat> okay, well, in, in that case, I've never had sex with a man before. <laughs> okay, but well, I know you I, have. I, 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 <laughs> yeah. No, but he, he brings up a good point, because there, there are some, some like, gay-for-pay escorts that, that have very strict boundaries in them. They might do things like that, that actually doesn't require them to be hard or orgasm. So like um, what? Like like some guys might just I don't know want want some guys are actually very, there's actually a lot of guys that are very submissive that would love a guy like him to just like service him and like muscle worship him and like they'll get themselves off you know. But you'd still yeah. have to get hard. Not, Not necessarily. necessarily. <laughs> I, I'd say the majority. You let him suck your soft dick. <laughs> I want my money back. <laughs> Fuck that. I, I'd say the majority, the majority of people that are escorting, like on the down low, aren't having intercourse. I'd say, literally, I'd say maybe 10 or 15 percent of hookers, and I like that word better than escorts. Okay. I'd say 15 percent of hookers are actually having intercourse. You know, there's it runs the gamut of a lot of other things that people are actually into that they'll pay for that okay. having having nothing to do with. You know, actually fucking. Yeah, I guess I'm just old fashioned. <laughs> <laughs> but you've done it. You've 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 had intercourse. I have with a guy. <laughs> yeah, and um, I I know it's hard for for some people to realize how how you do it, but I I've you know I've actually gotten better at it over time, and it's <laughs> it's just, practice I just, makes perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just I go into my own head. So like, even though like physically I might be seem like I'm I guess present in there like, like mentally I'm thinking about hot chicks <laughs> doing stuff. With, so, you know? so you're like fucking a guy. Have you ever have you ever been fucked on? In a video? Yeah, actually, you know what? I, I would prefer to top, but they usually prefer me to bottom, and they'd pay me more money for it, so I actually mostly bottom. They paid you 300 bucks more, right? Uh, 500, like, oh, 500, 500 more. more. <laughs> yeah, I would think bottoming would be easier because, like, really, you just have to, like, kind of lay, lay there, but if you're topping, like, you have to, like, really perform. Well, that that's the thing. Like, bottoming, you don't have to worry so much about having a boner, but a lot of guys find bottoming 
uncomfortable. And like, this is the thing, I, I can actually enjoy bottoming like with girls like in my personal life like i'll let girls do stuff with my butt but it's it's, it's <laughs> you know but see that's so interesting that's a great point because a lot of straight guys miss out on the pleasure of yeah. the prostate but because like you've done this work you have you have a different relationship with your body and right yeah. some of those stigmas and and, and and it feels good. Yeah, and I mean, most people have um, like the sex receptors in their anus plus the prostate. So for most guys, it, if they tried it like and went into it gently at least, they might find it feels good. But a lot of guys, straight guys in particular, are, are close-minded about it because they they just associate it with with being gay as if that's wrong. You know, right. when I, I've said this in past videos, like there's a difference between attractions and actions. Like what you're attracted to and what you do are different things. At least that's how I perceive it. Um, so yeah, I, I can get into to anal with girls. With with guys, it depends. If they're really big, it can be uncomfortable. So on. Mm. Right. Know, Even I, when it's, you're it's, gay, it's, that's it's true. It's funny because <laughs> mo most of my gay guy friends they love a guy with a big dick I always hope a guy has a small one because I don't need a big one <laughs> it's funny that people like would not believe that you guys are straight because I think just the opposite that if you're gonna do the work that you do you have to be incredibly comfortable mm. with your straightness like yeah. that it's really it's kind of the exact opposite you can't, yeah you can't be like insecure or confident yeah. about yourself people forget that money changes the game you know, the, things, <laughs> the things you're doing for money in your personal life you know you just don't do those things yeah. a lot of times. But. I have twenty dollars in my pocket, so <laughs> <laughs> how far does that get me? <laughs> what is probably get you further with it? <laughs> <laughs> so wait, so wait, so has has doing this work made uh, a man's body more appealing to you or not, or changed the way that you look at look at guys? I mean, for me, I'm completely indifferent. I mean, it was just it was it was a phase of my life where it was kind of. I always say I'm very grateful. Like I'm grateful that, that dudes want to suck my dick and pay me for it. Because it allowed me to pay my rent at a certain point in my life. What about, has it changed your relationship to other straight guys? I hate straight people, for the most part. And I don't want that to come off like the wrong way, but for the most part, straight people are pretty fucking lame. So actually, it's true. Like I prefer at this point, I've got far more gay friends and you know people, they're just more fun to hang out with. And straight people just, generally suck and not in a good way. Yeah, this this is interesting. I, I think I think it's actually made me more even more sympathetic to, to straight males because before like I was raised very very sexually repressively and um I, I long had the suspicion that like males were not getting their, their sexual needs met in general. And then it just by you know having gay sex with, with or having sex with guys confirmed that to me like gay gay guys just get so much more sex than than straight guys do. It's like like guys want sex constantly and they don't get it from girls. Then I, I deal with these guys on a constant basis and I see like this is how guys actually are and like straight guys actually like a lot of girls will say that like straight guys are pervs and stuff but straight guys actually censor themselves even more than girls realize because when you put another guy with another guy there's no filter so like you go into a gay club and like guys will be even more extreme in the, the sexual stuff they'll say to each other than if they're to say it to a girl you know what I'm saying? Do you ever wish that you were gay? I I, I, I do. I actually think I like I would I would be better off in life if I was like gay or bisexual or even more so a female bisexual because then I'd have the most sexual options in terms of like who I could be with. You know. I second that. I think yeah. I, I think I might have a daddy or two if I was gay and I could do a little bit more, but I'm too limited. So. So you guys are are kind of outsiders looking in. Like, can you tell us how a gay man's mind works? I think, it's, I think it's pretty simple. This is pretty disgusting. I don't, I don't think it matters gay or straight. I just think men in general are pretty basic. We're pigs. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's pretty pretty easy. And there's no boundaries. Yeah, to me, it's not that complicated a question, I, or it's not that profound. So I would I would mostly agree, but I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily endow it with the negative connotation of like pig or dog or animal. Because I I mean I do think fundamentally gay, straight, bi, whatever males in general are just have a higher sex drive than females and. Uh, but I don't think that necessarily needs to be viewed as like a negative thing. It's it's only negative when it's like coercive or forceful or violent. But like if it's just like I don't know, wanting to have sex. And, yeah, like, I would push consensual. back on that because I don't know how if if, gay, if 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 men necessarily have a higher sex drive, but they definitely express it differently. And that's where I think they cross into being a little bit piggish because okay. it's a little bit. Yeah, being serious for a second, I think that we're we're allowed to be we're allowed to be animals and we're allowed <laughs> to be pigs, and it's tolerated by society. I, mean, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's not It's not looked at terribly if, you know, if a guy just comes up to you and says, you know, can I suck your dick? <laughs> like, you know, if a, if a girl went up to a guy in a bar and just said, hey, can I suck your dick? You know, she would be, 
know, she'd be a pariah. All of her friends would look at her like a whore or something else. Right. So it's, I think there's a lot of conditioning and yeah. all that stuff too. Let's transition into our lap dancing segment. <laughs> Is so, it that time already? Yeah, we have five minutes to. Okay. Oh, wow. Time so you're going to teach me how to do a lap dance and everyone at home because they also want to know. All right. Uh, so if you guys could slide this. this right. This up. <laughs> so I should come over here. Wait, so am I, am I, we're, give, we're am I giving the lap dance or? Okay. I think, I think you're going to give the lap dance. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to observe. Okay. You're so, going to give me a lap dance? <laughs> I guess so. So I'll, I guess I'll start off very basic, then I'll show you some, some of I've my tricks. I've never had a lap dance before. <laughs> never I've never had a lap dance. I'm going to critique. Oh, <laughs> so you better do a I'm, good I'm, job, a, I'm, okay. I'm breaking his lap dance cherry then. So this is very basic because you just want to literally <laughs> sit in their lap. <laughs> and you can just grind your booty like this. And if they're shy like Davey, you can make them put their hands on your boobs. <laughs> and then run their hands all the way down your body. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so and ready. I'm gonna start crying. If you're flexible like me, you can do some pretty cool tricks like this. Oh, this Trip is has a lot. Tricks. Trip has cool and tricks. bounce your booty this way. <laughs> this takes talent. My boyfriend can't do that, for the record. Well, I can even do it up here. <laughs> Now he's just showing off. <laughs> <laughs> like if you have an audience, right? You can you can start teasing the audience by you know, lifting up your shirt. Such a show off. <laughs> Pulling your undies down. I'm gonna flip the script. I'm actually gonna have you give me a lap dance. And so you're gonna sit here. You're gonna play me. Okay. You're gonna play the the big. I'm a big straight guy. Want to be straight guy? Yeah. Yeah. I guess I'll and sit I'm gonna. Uh, uh, uh. I'll I'll play the I'll play the self-hating you know customer. You have to make me feel like a bitch. Yeah, you a pussy boy? That's it. I'm yeah. your pussy boy. Okay. You, you got you got to sit on my lap, but you want to grind like the other way. You don't want to grind like that. Like kind of like just you know, like a dick. Like, like, just, like yeah. I don't even care. You like, don't even care. Yeah, you, like, you have no time for sexy? me. Is this sexy? You have no time for me. You gotta you gotta flex a little bit and tell me to worship your muscle. Yeah, worship my muscle, pussy bro. Boy. Pussy, pussy boy, pussy boy, bitch. <laughs> then, I, then I gotta worship your muscle a little bit. Yeah. Maybe, you know, do one of these. But you gotta get this closer. Is turning you gotta, me on. Yeah. <laughs> But you, you have to get real verbal. You gotta tell me I'm a little bitch. Yeah, you are a little bitch. And then you're gonna stick your dick in my mouth. Oh. You gotta tell me. You gotta you, say it. Is it you in gotta space, say it. Davey. Do you want your dick in? Do you want my dick in your mouth, pussy boy? Oh my god! I hope my mom is not watching. Me too. Oh. <laughs> say it, pussy boy. Do you want that dick in your mouth? Do you want me to come all over your face? You gotta say it. And you gotta be flexing oh at the same time. Yeah. You know, this you is really, really hot. Get into it. This is sexy. Remember, you're the straight is mastery everyone, guy. I I'm cannot the, I'm imagine the pussy what the comments are. I'm the pussy right boy. You are the pussy boy. Make me a pussy boy. You are the pussy I'm boy. The pussy boy. Yeah. Who's yeah, you the like, pussy boy? You like that pussy boy? I'm the pussy boy. <laughs> Who's your bitch? You're my bitch. I'm your bitch. Yeah. There you go. Wow. So now you got two different variations on a lap dance. <laughs> Those are some quite there. extreme variations. I have yeah. sweat through my entire my entire outfit. And you can get it's... either of those experiences at Adonis Lounge. Yeah. <laughs> so on that note, where can people where can people find you guys? I need a moment. I need to. <laughs> Um, so, I'm retiring. <laughs> so yeah, my, my most popular account is my, my Instagram. It's acro69, that's A-C-R-O-6-9. Or just Google my real name, which is Jamie Stroud, J-A-M-I-E. And where can people find you or You could find me and many dancers at Adonis Lounge. It's the country's largest gay male strip club. We operate in New York at Stonewall, the historic Stonewall Inn on Wednesdays, and Fairytale Lounge uh, Monday through, sorry, Sunday, seven days a week. And also in Los Angeles, we have a club, and in Palm Springs. What's the what's the club called in LA? It's a, it's Adonis, it's Adonis Lounge. Lounge. Yeah, Adonis Lounge. If you Google Adonis Lounge, you'll see a million things and videos and boys and all that good stuff, and you won't see my jerk off video. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna link to that down below. <laughs> so uh, for all you guys watching at home, thanks for tuning in for this segment. We are gonna take a quick sponsored break, and right after that, you are gonna see a musical performance by David Hernandez. So stay tuned, just 60 seconds away. I'm Davey Wavy, and as a special thank you from AdamandEve.com, use discount code LIVE50 to save 50% off almost any one item and get free shipping in the US. Adam and Eve has every sex toy that you could possibly imagine, and also a lot that you probably couldn't imagine, but trust me, they're real. You'll also get 24-7 customer service, 100% customer satisfaction, and 20% of the profits go to fighting the spread of HIV and STDs, so you can get off with peace of mind. With 10 million plus highly satisfied customers, see what all the fuss is about at AdamandEve.com. 
I'm Davey Wavy and today I want to talk to you about your bum and more specifically how you can stay ready. Pure for Men is a proprietary fiber supplement that is a blend of psyllium, flax, and chia seed. It works like a sponge going through your body so that when you go, you fully go. This of course reduces prep time and makes you more comfortable and confident. And since most of us don't get enough fiber naturally through our diets, this can make a difference in your overall health. For more information, visit pureformen.com. What's up, I'm David Hernandez, and this is my new single, Beautiful, out August 16th. The stars are in the sky, and they're starting to align. I see you passing by, and we're slowing down the time. Now my love is flashing by, all I see is flashing lights. You're right here by my side, can you feel it come alive? If this were a love song, would you be mine? Cause I just can't get you off of my mind. And I think about you all day and night So I wrote you a love song A love song, baby, beautiful I think you're beautiful So damn incredible, so unforgettable Yes, I think you're beautiful Baby, you're beautiful I think you're beautiful That we touch, no nothing could stop the rush. You almost picked me up, picked me up, picked me up. Now I'm feeling so much love, and I just can't get enough. So come on, lift me up, lift me up, lift me up. If this were a love song, would you be mine? Cause I just can't get you off of my mind. And I think about you all day and night. So I wrote you a love song. A love song, baby, you're beautiful I think you're beautiful So damn incredible, so unforgettable Yes, I think you're beautiful Baby, you're beautiful I think you're beautiful Unforgettable called Never Did. <clears throat> I put that pain away in a box that never got me far. So hard to climb, but I still climb the walls of your heart. Too many tears I was in You were out So many doubts Ooh, It wasn't working out And your words Cut like knives And I bled Once and why But I don't hate you I didn't hate you That you made me cry, but the pain always did subside. And I don't hate you, 
It's hard to learn, but I had to try. Now the truth is out, this record is out, and I'ma say goodbye. See, I let it go, and I'ma live my life. Oh, and your words cut like knives, and I'm glad one why. See, I don't hate you, I didn't hate you. I can see without fear. I don't need you here. I know now I won't break. Stronger than my mistakes, leaving you in the past. Yes, and these words were my life. And I'm left wondering why. See, I don't hate you. I didn't hate you. Didn't hate you. I never did. I never did. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yes. How are you doing, awesome. Davey Wavy? Oh, you're huge sweaty. Fan. I'm a huge fan. I am sweaty. You I'm are Latin. sweaty. We have that fire. Yeah? yeah. I like that. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank I you. Uh, I hear you want to talk about sex. Uh, yeah, totally. Well, Sex unfortunately, is, is we're, the... we're out of time, oh, so. <laughs> what a buzzkill. Are you single? They um, want to know. Um, yes, I'm currently single and just living the dream. Ready to make your anus tingle. <laughs> <laughs> There's that, Ma. I hope you're watching. We... <laughs> so we're, where can people find more of you? and? Um, uh, Twitter, Instagram, D. Hernandez Music. Also, my official website, uh, www.davidhernandezofficial.com. And, and when is the single come out? August 16th. I'm Davey Wavy, and as a special thank you from adamandeve.com, use discount code LIVE50 to save 50% off almost any one item and get free shipping in the US. Adam and Eve has every sex toy that you could possibly imagine, and also a lot that you probably couldn't imagine, but trust me, they're real. You'll also get 24-7 customer service, 100% customer satisfaction, and 20% of the profits go to fighting the spread of HIV and STDs, so you can get off with peace of mind. With 10 million plus highly satisfied customers, see what all the fuss is about at adamandeve.com. I'm Davey Wavy, and today I want to talk to you about your bum, and more specifically, how you can stay ready. Pure for Men is a proprietary fiber supplement that is a blend of psyllium, flax, and chia seed. It works like a sponge going through your body so that when you go, you fully go. This, of course, reduces prep time and makes you more comfortable and confident. And since most of us don't get enough fiber naturally through our diets, this can make a difference in your overall health. For more information, visit pureformen.com. Welcome back. We are live in Los Angeles, and I am here with two of my favorite people, in the entire world. It is Bria and Chrissy. Hi, Welcome. Baby. We love you. I love yes. you too. <laughs> Thanks for having us. My pleasure. So you guys do some really amazing content. Uh, for people at home who don't know what you guys do, I'm sure they've seen your videos. What's a summary of who you guys are? Okay, well, there's a, I guess there's a difference between some of the videos that they've probably seen versus, you know, a lot of the videos that we do. The videos that you've probably seen are lesbians touch penis for the first time and uh, straight men touch vagina for the first time or straight men touch how many percent. views, by the way, on on that? Uh, around thirty. Million? I think a total of those three videos probably have like fifty, 50. or sixty million views. NBD, no big deal. 
It's a lot. I can't. I don't views. understand that number. Yeah, it's no, crazy. it's crazy. But the other stuff that we do is we do a lot of self-help and LGBT uh, music, comedy, fun, silly videos. Um, so yeah, basically we try to make people uh, accept and love themselves just for who they are and create a safe space and community for them. And in addition to your videos, you've also become an advocate for issues that are important to you. And one of those issues is revenge porn. Yes. Which is what we're talking about tonight. And do you mind sharing some of what your story is with that? When I was 18, I was dating a really controlling guy and I suggested that we break up and he was really upset and he suggested a night of drinking before he left and then uh, I got blacked out, intoxicated, never been drunk before and he proceeded to, once I was unconscious, pull out a camera and have sex with me while I was um, unable to consent and then years later I moved on with my life and eventually realized I liked women, met the love of my life, Bria, and we started our channel and. Uh, a year in, uh, videos started popping up, people saying, our fans saying, there's porn videos and you're a terrible slut and a role model, terrible role model and a whore and look at these porn videos and I had to Google myself and find out that I had been taken advantage of because I had no recollection of the night and I had no idea the videos existed and he had made seven videos and posted them online with the intent to ruin my life. When you had that moment, like realizing that, that this was out there, what was that? What was that like? It was shattering. I mean, it was crushing. I, my life, I knew, was changed from that moment on. And I was, um, I can't, I don't know. And if, if somebody has had it happen to them, it's just the, the amount of devastation of feeling so betrayed and taken advantage of. In my, my case, it was a, a jilted ex lover, but it could be, you know, from a, a site for profit or a complete stranger or a hack the uh, emotion that you feel when you realize that your your most vulnerable and most intimate self has been uh, taken without your consent and then shared with the world. In my case, it was you know shared and downloaded to 37 different pornography sites and viewed thousands and thousands of times. So it, I don't know, it was just life altering in a really horrific way. So I think when people hear the story, they probably think, well, there's a lot of legal options that are available to you and this should be something, at least the legal path should be easy to move down. It was not. Yeah, people think immediately when people saw the videos they thought I was dead or he was having sex with a corpse. And when we put out our, uh, we did a, a campaign for signatures, change.org to try to raise signatures for a federal law against revenge porn and all of the comments were, I just can't believe this isn't illegal already. And right. The truth was, you know, it's only been in the past couple of years that states have started to pass laws against it. Only 37 states, I believe, have laws against revenge porn right now, maybe less, and uh, just a handful of countries in the world. And in my situation, my ex was in, in the United Kingdom when he uploaded the videos. So when I went to the police, you know, they said, it's not our problem. He did it in the UK. And the UK said, well, he did it to you in the United States. So um, there weren't a lot of legal options for me. And when you went to the district attorney of Atlanta? She passed down to the Atlanta Police Department that, you know, in the videos, perhaps uh, someone, maybe a jury, would argue that what if I could have consented in this one single moment? And because of that, they said it was too much of a problem and an effort for them to try to help me. So uh, the police dropped my case. Why was it important for you to speak out about this and not just be silent and quiet about it? You know, there was a number of things that made me want to speak out about it. Uh, first of all, being, you know, our platform is to stand up to injustice and the fact that we're LGBT and trying to show what a healthy lesbian relationship is like, that was already taking a stance against a, a taboo topic. So I knew we already had a voice and I already felt a responsibility to stand up to injustice. And so from that point of view, I felt I had to, um, I had a duty to represent myself and other people who may go through this because I had a voice and an ability to speak out. And then on the other side, there was, you know, I can't let my ex get away with this right. and uh, be able to live my life without going after him. And you have you have a huge platform of people that that support you and that love you. How how have they been able to support you? You did a because um, like there's it's incredibly expensive to pursue any of this, right? So absolutely. Um, well, our our legal team is based in the UK, so we had to pay you know out of pocket to go there multiple times to meet with our lawyers and to meet with the police there. So we did a crowdfunding campaign. 
this year to try to raise money uh, to cover the cost of our, our civil case, and we were able to raise almost $40,000. Without that, we would not have been able to pursue the case and be in the position that we are now, which is you know, pursuing the, the first ever civil lawsuit against revenge porn in the United Kingdom. So we're, we're very fortunate and incredibly grateful to those of you who helped us. What about when this happens to, because it happens to men and women, but it's different when it happens to women, and, and how, how, how so? Yeah, uh, well, 90% of the victims of revenge porn are women, and we live, unfortunately, in a very hypersexualized society here in the United States that uh, praises men for their sexual uh, prowess and accomplishments. Obviously, not all men. You know, you've been a victim of revenge porn, and you weren't praised for it. It was very difficult for you. But we just live in a society where shaming of women is commonplace, encouraged, and just a way of life. So women blame themselves, victims blame themselves, and have trouble getting jobs. They lose relationships. You know, it's just, it's sort of like uh, victims of rape. You shouldn't have worn such a short skirt. Obviously, that's not true, right. uh, but that's just something that is easy to turn to because it must be the woman's fault. Well, right. When they say, you know, you shouldn't have uh, sent those pictures, why would you send pictures if you didn't want them to get shared? But, well, the truth is, everyone has pictures. Most people have pictures. Everyone's taking pictures of themselves. It's not the person's fault for doing that. That's the same argument with somebody saying, I was, well, you shouldn't have been wearing the short skirt. That's the argument now for revenge porn. So that you shouldn't have taken those pictures. What happens if someone is in your shoes and, and is the victim of revenge porn? What, what are their options now, and I guess what would you want them to be? So I would just say, you know, if you're a victim of revenge porn, the first thing is you are not alone. I'm sitting here, and I know that I felt so alone when this happened to me, and I know that people feel very alone because there are so few legal and criminal uh, ramifications that you can pursue. But that is changing very rapidly. There are there are legal options. There's the Cyber, Cyber Civil Rights Initiative that offers resources and advice, a helpline for revenge porn victims, and then also puts them in touch with a law firm that does pro bono work to represent revenge porn victims. So I would say, first, document everything. Do not delete anything before you have pictures of every single thing, any search result, any, any image, any text message, all of that is going to be important in your case and your ability to get justice. Um, also timestamps. Timestamps, yeah, of course. And then uh, building, having that and then taking it somewhere, whether it's reaching out to the Cyber Civil Rights Initiative or to law enforcement, check in your state if there are laws about revenge porn. You know, now a lot of states have laws, so there are many more options for victims, and, and that's really promising, but we still don't have a federal law yet, which uh, is, is a shame, but hopefully hopefully it happens soon. And where can people at home get more of you guys? We are at, at Bri and Chrissy on everything, youtube.com <laughs> slash Bri and Chrissy, or you can check out our vlogs, youtube.com slash Our Lesbian Love, or at Bri and Chrissy. Well, thank you guys so much for, for being here. I think your strength and your determination in this really inspires everyone, myself included. So Aww. it's an honor to have you guys. Thank you Aww, for caring. You, That's, yeah. That means the world. So uh, on that note, for everyone at home, thank you so much for being here for day four of Business of Sex. A big thank you to our sponsors, Pure for Men and adamandeve.com. Please give them some love and check them out. And of course, we have one day left. Tomorrow is the grand finale. So join me then, same time, same place. And as always, more to come.